Support for Flying Valiant Builds is brought to you by First and 64th Customs on YouTube, where no diecast is safe. Video Geek Productions, all business, all geek. Brian Smith YouTube channel, clever schemes for fun and profit. A generous grant from the Jonathan Von Esch Foundation and from support from viewers like you. Please like, share, and subscribe. Whoa. Things are different in here. Let's see who rolled into the shop. I'll and guess. I think this one's made its last haul. Hey there folks, Chuck here. Well here we are again with another 3 blind mice build. And this one I almost passed on because I'm usually not much for fantasy cars, but I kept coming back to it because the hauling gas seemed like a true challenge to see what I could do with something that's got a look that's both grounded in reality and yet utterly fanciful at the same time. I even got as far as disassembling the truck before I even really had an idea of what direction I was going in. Then the other day I went into my local independent bookstore, was looking through the used books, and found this little gem. While the book is sadly only printed in black and white, the cover image alone was worth the price of admission, and inside were all sorts of purpose-built and repurposed vehicles that were both grounded in reality and yet utterly fanciful at the same time. So the concept was perfect, but I wanted to do something a little more than just a tanker for a circus truck. It needed a hook. And what if instead of hauling gas or water, this hauler was a carrier for wild animals? And that gets a little sticky ethics wise. So I took it a step further. What if some unknown semi-aquatic beast just happened to be discovered by a traveling circus? And what if they decided to capture it and make it part of the show? What if while they were transporting it, something went wrong? Now, what if where the truck came to rest became that creature's new home? So yeah, I overthought it a little. Just work with me on this. Ready? Punch that subscribe button, and we'll see where this takes us. Let's boogie. I knew I was pressed for time on this build, so I promised myself I wouldn't cut the vehicle. I would just do a paint job. So, of course, the first thing I did was start prepping the vehicle to cut it. And that started with getting rid of the getting rid of the casting lines and then drilling out the headlight that I wanted to have missing. The, the face on this vehicle really was screaming that it had almost a skull-like look to it, and I thought I would play on that as this is going to be kind of a creepy cryptozoology sci-fi horror type build. Then it was time to bust out the Dremel tool and add all the dents and dings that this thing would have from crashing through a fence and into some woods. I had this really great theme dreamed up for a bayou style diorama that was near like a dirt road that it had gone over an embankment and crashed into a river and whatever was living in there had decided to set up shop with the vehicle as its new home after it busted out. And I really loved these doors on the side. I really wanted to have a door or two open and I limited myself to one door because again, I knew my time was working against me and I had already broken my promise not to cut the car. So the other thing I had to do was to get rid of the tanks and make this look like it was meant as a transport vehicle. So that meant cutting out this middle plastic section. It seems every time I want to do a vehicle with an interior, it's got a solid block of plastic covering it up. See my A100 van build for another block of plastic that I had to deal with. Originally I was going to try and just cut around it and then I realized that wasn't really necessary and I just cut the front and the back separately and glued them to the metal base with a little CA glue and I would just treat the interior and the chassis as one thing. So then I decided to replace it with Originally I was thinking bars and then I thought, oh, chain link would be kind of cool. And I had this car air filter, like you can get any of the big box stores or your local auto parts shop. And it makes this really interesting in scale kind of chain link look. And they're quite cheap. You can usually find one for about five bucks and you'll have more chain link than you'll know what to do with. So the second problem with this vehicle was that it was definitely not meant to open up and transport anything. So I had to add some panel lines on the back and there was this cool panel line across the top and I decided to just draw that down the back and make it look like the back hatch opened. And they loaded it, whatever it is, into the back of the vehicle and the chain link was supposed to keep it on top. And the chain link, it turned out, was not strong enough to contain it. So I used my scribing tool to mark my lines and then went over it with a razor saw. 
attachment that you can put on your exacto knife and it's a great attachment i've used those things forever and they the, the razor saws last forever as well too they they hold up really well i decided to go with styrene instead of trying to make the original metal that i cut out work because it was way too thick and then there wasn't enough material because of the way it was cut out there's like a one millimeter gap and that's huge on these little cars and then I took a little styrene eye beam to make the back of the storage cover so it looked like it went back a little bit and used my scrambling tool to put a little notch on it so that it matches the other doors. And then it was time for sealer and I decided to go with old parchment craft paint to mimic faded white and then I used faded red from AK Interactive on the fenders and I used Vallejo yellow ochre along the top. So kind of a ketchup and mustard circusy look. It was kind of interesting because I've never really done anything circus themed. So if you ever want a nightmare in design, start looking at how circus graphic design is really done. It's so complicated and it's so hard to get right. And I used the Sharpie to fill in the panel lines and then it was time to find my logo for my circus. And I wanted a creepy but not too creepy clown. So I dug around on Pinterest and found this great clip art and modified it slightly and decided to make it the Alistair circus just because that sounds like a creepy name and found this font on defont.com used it and the banner which i also found on defont.com also all of these were found on that website and decided that the circus would call whatever it is that they found the leviathan and that's part of the fun of this build is i want the viewer of the vehicle to wonder what kind of animal it was that they found what they were keeping in here, how it got out, and what it's up to now, because it's not in the vehicle now, but it's probably nearby. What do you think the Leviathan is? Watch the video and let me know in the comments below what kind of animal you think it is. I decided to label the storage doors as food, tasers, and ammo, just to kind of hint that whatever it is that was in here was kind of dangerous. And then it was time to seal everything up and 3D print some parts, and I found these really cool animal skulls on Thingiverse and wanted to make it look like these were things that the creature had found out in the woods while it was hunting and brought them back to the lair and turned the inside of the holler into its nest. I wanted to make sure the glass was good and weathered and broken like maybe something had burst out of it or burst through it at some point and as this vehicle was forgotten and slowly went back to nature things had started to grow out of that. I didn't detail the interior too much because I knew most of it was going to be covered. I found this coconut husk material at Walmart in the clearance bin for a dollar. And you know, it's so much material. And I threw it in this little spice grinder and that kind of worked <laughs> um, at breaking it up a little bit. Uh, I found this spice grinder at a local thrift shop for like $4. And it's perfect for grinding up ground cover, but you have to have enough stuff to make it spin around. So I had to chop it down a bit to make it work. Then I dumped way too much white glue onto my base. That was embarrassing, but I decided to work with it and sop up what I could and make it work and then spread out the ground up coconut shavings to make it look like filler for a nest in the bottom of the container. Then I broke out my favorite three weathering pencils. The chipping one is still by far my favorite and I used it almost exclusively. I really didn't even get into the other two. I used the medium rust one a little bit. But the chipping one is so handy and it does such a good job of simulating chipped rusted paint. But not only is this vehicle going to be rusted, but it's also rusted and eventually going to be sitting in water. So I knew I had to step things up a little bit when it came to weathering because it's not just going to be orangey rusts. It's going to be greens and almost blues in spots. So fortunately, I had a couple of paint sets that I was able to get courtesy of my amazing patrons including this humidity and wet effects set from MIG and this decay and abandon set from AK Interactive. So let's crack them open. The one that I was excited to try was the decay deposits from the decay and abandon set. And it does a really cool job of imitating greenish grime and uh, patinaed metal that you would find on an abandoned car in a humid area. Also this slimy grime green was really cool from the humidity and wet effects and I wanted one side of the vehicle to look like it was the side that the creature was climbing in and out of and that would be the water side and the other side would be more overgrown with vines and stuff and then I matched it with some slimy light green grime that was also from the set and then I got a little clever for myself I found this sun bleached filter that I wanted to try 
And unfortunately, that also reacted with the enamel bases of all of the stuff that I just put on and took it all off. So <laughs> it kind of became a grimy mess, but I did like the end filter results. So I ended up going back over it and doing it again. But before that, I gave the interior another quick wash of brown just to make all of the ground cover look like it was coming together. And I went over the underside with weathering powders, even though the end effect, this thing is going to be completely covered. And I use this faded green on top of the rust just to see what it would do. Because again, in its final state, you're not going to be able to see the underside because it'll be attached to a base. If you'd like to see me do a build video on the base, let me know in the comments below. And it was time to place my different skulls. I painted them with polyscale aged concrete and then went over them with a brown wash. And that was really all I needed to do to make them look like old, dried, sun bleached bones. Again, they probably wouldn't look like that in a nest like this, but I wanted them to stand out. And so this is kind of more like movie horror type effects than actual effects. Because we're dealing with a fantasy vehicle, so let's have fun with the fantasy, but why not? I also 3D printed some more realistic tires like that would be on a commercial vehicle. And you know, I didn't sweat the actual rubber and rust on them too much because I knew I was going to be going over them with a lot of green and wet effects anyway. And I just found the designs on Thingiverse and added some, not really axles, but some spacers in Tinkercad so that I could place them in the wheel openings and have them look good. Then it was time for some vines. So I grabbed some roots out of my backyard. We happened to be working on turning our backyard into a garden. So I had plenty of roots nearby from a plot that we'd been digging up. Found some with some really fine tendrils of roots to them and they are gonna make perfect vines. So I put them in my sonic cleaner, which was again, probably overkill just to kind of get the dirt and stuff out of them. And then I put them in my food dehydrator that I use for paint drying. And while that was happening, I decided to finish up some details, do the amber lenses and the red clear taillights. I knew they were going to be mostly covered, but I didn't want to do them too early in the process because I didn't want them to completely disappear. And then, of course, some oyster white for the headlight. But again, I wanted it to look almost like an eye. So, so I wanted it to stand out more than it probably would on an actual abandoned vehicle in the woods. Then I used this faded green from the Decay and Abandoned set, and it does a really good job of simulating mildew. I was skeptical about it at first, but it does a really good job of making things look like there's mold and mildew that's been growing on this vehicle. And once that was done, I went over everything with some pigment binder. I know it seems obvious, but after I got the wheels on the vehicle, it suddenly hit me that if this is going to be on a display, the wheels A don't need to be straight and B probably wouldn't be straight if this thing had run off the road. So I took the front wheels back off and chopped them a little bit with the razor saw so that they would be sitting at an angle like they steered off an embankment and tried to overcorrect and ended up in the water. Well, once the roots were dry, I soaked them in some matte Mod Podge and water and started applying them. And it went okay. They were a combination of being both too mushy and too springy in spots. So I don't know if I over dried them in the food dehydrator or what. I know it looks like a hot mess, but eventually I made it work and I did use CA glue in spots to hold it down. I also decided to switch sides on which side the monster was going in and out on from my initial because I liked the vines climbing up the closed side of the bus and then the slime on the open door side of the bus. So I went back over the bus in the slimy grime dark and the slimy green light. I'll probably have to adjust these effects later once I finally get the base on because I don't know exactly how deep this thing will be sitting in water, but right now I have it set up to the rims in water. Once the roots had dried on the bus, it was time to add some flocking. I had some just regular rear road dark green flocking and added some more Mod Podge, set of tweezers, and just a little bit of it. A little of this flocking goes such a far way. And just went over all of the roots and dabbed on sparse bits of the matte Mod Podge and then sprinkled on some of the green flocking so it would look like patches of leaves. And it ended up turning out pretty good, I think. I was really happy with how it worked out. It was almost exactly how I envisioned it in my head with the vines coming out of the headlight and the front windshield and then crawling up the side of the hauler. The tricky part was the vines that were growing over 
the opening of the bus, so I had to be very careful what I sprinkled in and make sure I got all of the flocking out from underneath. Then it was time for some more pigment binder to hold everything in place, and I went over all the flocking to make sure that it was good and sealed, and it's a good way to seal up the roots so the roots don't decay on me. Then it was time for this stuff. I'd never used MIG's wet effects, and holy cow, is this a completely different animal than I thought it would be. I thought it was going to be like a gloss varnish, and it is, but it's also not. Like, it's almost like a syrup consistency. It's a very thick stuff, and it, it really makes it look like there's standing water on whatever it is. So I did a really good job of imitating slime, and then I ended up using it on the headlight as well, and I apologize that the angle didn't turn out here like I had intended. I'm toying around with doing a second camera angle while I work, and it's still a work in progress. But I wanted to show some of the work because this stuff really, it stays as shiny as it looks in this footage. And on headlights, it looks fantastic. It looks like glass on headlights. So it's completely changed how I'm gonna be doing headlights from now on. Once that was done, I went over everything once again with a little pigment binder to hold everything in place. Just to add to the fun horror movie element of this, I decided to put a harbinger on the back of the bus that somebody had hastily scrawled run on the back quarter panel to warn any passersby that they should probably not stay in this area too long. And after that warning, that was that. Time to put on the decal, give it number 14, and call it a day. So once again, here's what we started with. The, the Hot Wheels hauling gas promotional vehicle. It was really eating at me what I was going to do with it, and I'm really grateful I came across that book because... Man, it took me in such a wild direction, and I'm really happy with the end result, which is right here. The layer of some cryptozoological freak of nature that has been captured and escaped, and it's made what was its prison its new home, and it can't wait to have you over for dinner. So definitely my grimiest build to date, but also probably the most fun because I could really go wild on it and you know imitate slime where the creature has been crawling in and out of the van and do some wet effects and try a bunch of new things and I, I really enjoyed this. It doesn't look very good on a flat surface just because the underside is not very flat but again this is going to go on a display base so I'm not that worried about it because it's going to be sitting down into the base. So I decided to do something a little different with my glamour shots as well which you'll see at the end. At this point once again I'd like to thank my patrons as you saw at the beginning, we have the Bandit level sponsors, and we also have at the Rockford level, Mid Island Custom Diecast. Go check out Evan's channel and give him a subscribe. We also have Carolyn Ellis, my amazing wife and partner, and the best online math tutor anyone could ever hire. So if you want to hire her to learn 6th through 12th grade math or even some college math, hit me up in the comments or send me a message. We also have at the Douglas level, the Drew Rance and Raiders podcast, Jordan Kleinman, and Curtis Crafts on YouTube. As always, all these builds are for sale unless otherwise noted. So if you're interested in one of my builds, check out my playlist in the comments section and shoot me a message. I also do commissions. I just picked up a few new commissions that will eventually be videos. So there will be more on that later. And I've got some more videos on the way. So be sure to like and subscribe and punch the bell icon so you get notifications. I'm a little sporadic right now when it comes to episodes, so punching the bell will make sure that you don't miss anything. But yeah, this is definitely something different, and I'm really interested in what you all think. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know if there's a type of vehicle that you'd like to see me try or a type of weathering that you'd like to see me do. I've also got a build coming up with Gunslinger Garage featuring the Bearcat 3D shop diorama. That's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a multi-part series, so be sure to tune in for that. Also, be sure to check out the other three Blind Mice builds. I'd like to thank Lee, George, and Paul again for hosting a really fun event, and I'll be doing another one next month. Also, be sure to check out the other three Blind Mice builders. I'm probably the last one to get my video up, so they'll all be easy to find. And once again, I'd like to thank everyone for coming along with me for the ride. So until next time, stay fresh, cheese bags. Cheese bags.